What's up guys? Making some progress. <clears throat> I got the pistons in today. Some DS Racing uh, Forged units. Um, I couldn't spend the extra $200 for the slightly better piston. These are still forged, but they're the six, or the 564 ring setup instead of the one millimeter stuff or the one and a half millimeter ring sets that you could get. Pistons are about almost $200 more. And the rings are about $80 more than a standard set. So that's where we're at. So here's these four put together. It's a 13 cc dish. Um, I weighed these. They weigh about 10 grams less than the probe piston. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the probe piston pin, which is the exact same thing as these ones, but it weighs about three or four grams more. So that will knock down the delta that I'm short to get the balance of the motor right. But you prefer the piston, or I guess if you're going to do this, you kind of want the pistons to be slightly less if you had to instead of more. Um, a little bit more would have been okay because I could have maybe trimmed off a little bit of material to get the weight down to match. But from what I've read, a slightly overbalanced motor is going to be better than one that is too heavy on the piston side. So that's where we're at. Motor over yonder. There you go. Pistons are in the motor. So probably going to put the head studs on and drop that head on and get it bolted down and then start turning apart the other side. And then repeat the process, swap all the pistons and rods around, reusing the same rod bearings since that they should be fine. None of them look bad on this side, so we'll see what the other side looks like. Alrighty, so we got the driver's side head put back on and pulled the passenger side so good thing we did that because that's missing some piston that one's all together that one's all together and that one there we go it's kind of hard to see is missing some piston too so that'd be three out of eight so that's a passing grade in my book so we're going to go ahead and get these pulled out and get the rod swapped around and Put the new pistons in all right next day got the passenger side head put back on uh head gasket got it all torqued down so here's where we're at uh so i'm thinking next we're gonna start laying the exhaust manifold on each side and get that going and then may even get the turbo piping laid back in here not too worried about the valve train next because i don't have an intake to put on it um, i still need to grind on the intake that guy over there and I still got to sort out the fuel rails and the fuel pressure sensor and fuel temp and get all that sorted out so I got a little bit of time so I'm gonna maybe just do all these peripheral items and then um, if I have time I'll get the valve train sorted out but where we're at all right. <clears throat> so go real quick this truck lower I augured all these holes out to match the gasket so hopefully I get the airflow I'm looking for uh, and then the upper and the gasket so see how this all bolts together all right so we made some progress from last week uh, we got the bungs welded not really the bungs I just took the aluminum rod and ran in a circle and filled it in and then went back and tapped it or drilled it and tapped it for the eighth inch pipe threads back there clearance that out of the way for the throttle cable which is going to go to there I have to shorten the throttle cable up but i think what we're going to try to do today is get the lower intake bolted down and uh with the gaskets and all that and then swap all the fuel rail or the, the injectors and such around drop all the wiring back on it and see if we could at least get it running. solid 
Chip 99, battery volt. All right, closer look. Intake manifold design. The bungs, PCV valve back here. Uh, this fuel rail, I don't know if you can even see it, uses the A and 8 O-ring stuff. So I had to kind of make a fitting and also bought a fitting for the fuel pressure in the back and also in the front. So what's nice is this intake the fuel rails are isolated from the intake with these little sheet metal widgets under here. You can even see that. So now the heat from the motor doesn't feel the fuel rails as bad as it did on the other setup. So uh, throttle pedal cable pulls from underneath. And I got the return spring kind of figured out, so that seems to be working well. So tonight, the idea is I got to get the battery I get the battery back up underneath where it's supposed to go. I need to find all the hardware and make sure I still have all those pieces. And then I need to double check the oil pan, see if it's leaking or not. Last time I checked it, kind of oil pan something. Yeah, I need to wipe that down and see what's going on. But I need to hang the idle arm back up in there because you have to drop the idle arm to get the uh, oil pan out. So that's where we're at. So far, so good. Got it out of the driveway. 